welcome. This is a weekly series that I call Untold Burgundy, where I tell a story about an unknown Appalachian or wine place in Burgundy. I never know where to put, just stop. Reli, 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 the whites, the reds, the sparklings, aka Cremant. But before we begin, let me just invite you to gently tap the like button and you might even want to subscribe and only if you want or can consider supporting my country. Ukraine has been fighting for more than a year, for more than since 2014, to protect its sovereignty and against the Russian invasion. But also remember that Ukrainians are fighting to protect the freedom in the whole free world. So if you want to support Ukraine, I have the links below. I'll be very thankful as all of the Ukrainians. Thank you. Ruli, a small village located in Burgundy, duh. More specifically in the sub-region of Burgundy, which is called Cote Chalonnaise, which I cannot stress enough is the place where most of the hidden gems of Burgundy come from. So here in here in Ruli, we have more or less the equal amounts of reds and whites produced. So the wine village or appellation dedicated to Chardonnay and Pinot Noir. There's also a bit of aligoté growing here as well, not to forget. Well, actually, maybe a bit more whites are produced here than reds. But both Pinot Noir and Chardonnay have found their piece here in Rully. I, I personally am a huge fan of Rully's whites, which is what I have now, obviously. And I love them, just absolutely adore how floral they are, how mineral they are. They have this lovely stone brush and just generally they are such a they have this lean clean character to them but well reds are really nice too though <laughs> they're just what you call gourmandise or you know very appetizing kind of flavorful but they often what i have to be honest what sometimes bothers me in really reds is that they have this cooked fruit character this cooked raspberry jam which maybe, which sometimes might be a bit annoying. Soils, soils here are very diverse. Um, mostly composed of the sedimentary stone, again, date back to millions years ago when Burgundy was covered by a vast tropical sea. So you're gonna have a bit of sedimentary limestone, a bit of that clay, but also what's interesting is the sandy texture, which gives the wines a bit of fluffiness, this light weightness as well. And generally the soils, they absorb water super, super well so that later the water can hydrate the vine plant, which is very important because just like humans, the vine plant needs to be hydrated to work well, to be productive. Now, both whites and reds, they are fabulous to drink young. In fact, they're recommended to drink, to be drunk young. Okay, now what is young, you might ask? What is young for wine? Like, what is young? <laughs> Just, it's, it's typically three to four years after they have been bottled. My Rally is about, it needs to be opened. So I have 2017 here and I guess this grandpa is about to um, retire. That didn't sound quite right. As I said, Rally is mostly known for, their, for its whites, but it is also the beating heart of Harkling Wines, aka Cremant. This is the magical, absolutely affordable alternative to your iconic champagne sparklings. If you're looking for a great, affordable, sparkling wine, aka Cremant from Rully, I would go for this one particular name, which is called Louis Picamelo. He's just a grandfather or a gra uh, finding father, founding father, God, founding father of uh, Cremants. He was really one of the first I must say, Rui, Rouillons to produce Cremant and Rui, and he has really amazing selection and he's really terroir uh, driven Cremants. He also uses Aligoté gray variety in his sparklings, which, which gives it another kick of freshness. And my table is just, uh, oh, look at that. <laughs> Anyway, Louis Picamalo, a great address. Another great name, uh, Marie and Paul Jackson, a, a brother and sister duo who took over from their father, a pretty iconic father, Henri Jackson. Apparently he worked tireless to restore the reputation 
of Rully after all of the disasters of the 20th century and he did a pretty amazing job and well yeah on his website he compliments himself uh, pretty um, abundantly for all the efforts he took to restore the reputation of Rully and draw back all of the winemakers who abandoned the place. Anyway, just a really great address, Jackson, Marie-Paul Jackson, and they have just a variety of appellations in the whole of Chalonnaise, so really hidden gems, and they also have pretty spectacular cremons, so. Now, okay, what I have for you today is something really, really dear to my heart, something really, really special, and just, I love them so, so much, just, they're so sweet, it's, Young, handsome, hardworking Felix de Bavler, really the future of Rully. <laughs> Let me give you a closer look what's going on on the bottle. I would have to probably. <laughs> So Felix runs the domain. Here's here his name, right here, 2017. Rolly, the name of the appellation, and this is him. Uh, Anne and is Anne is his mom. I, I think it's his mom, grandma. I think it's his mom. So Anne is his mom, and Sophie is his mom, and then Felix took over the domain a couple of years ago, and they call the domain Rouamage. Translated as the three wise kings, those who came to Jesus when he was born. I think so magical. So 2017 is Felix's favorite vintage. Okay, you know that my favorite vintage is correct. 2019, but 17 is top three, I want to say, for the white. Um, Felix says that 2017 is one of the most balanced vintages. Let's, uh, let's check out. Nice color, aged color. Immediately this lovely floralness. And also like the first thing that comes to my mind when I taste um, Rolly wines, and generally the wines from Felix is clean. This is just an amazing wine for those of you who are looking um, for, for wine which is not too fresh, you know, not too acidic, but also not too oaky, not too heavy on your palate. This offers you exactly that. Don't, I've tasted it before, so <laughs> I know them quite well. I love them quite well too, quite well. I love them too, point. So I know them quite well. Amy C is the wife of Felix and they're just, oh my God. They're just such an amazing couple. I think I've never met such a welcoming and heartwarming and just beautiful family. All right. Oh, bonsoir, hazelnut. That lovely. If you age Rui in, in the oak barrels and if you do it skillfully, you're going to get this lovely nuttiness, but just a nice, fresh hazelnut, exactly right to... It's not, it's, it's not too old at all. So maybe I should change and say that the average age of Rui... Well, maybe it's just Felix. He's just doing it really skillfully. So it's not... It's not like the wine is overboard, although it's, well, it's 2017, so it's, what, what, five years old? It's not six years old, so it's not, it's not overboard, it's not too old. It's not a retiring grandpa, I'm gonna take it back. <laughs> mm. I know it feels like I love every wine, but I also, every wine I taste here, but I also choose them quite carefully. Oh my god, a very surprising salty note. Super refreshing, but a grapefruit as well. Definitely this hazelnut on the palate is even more pronounced, which gives you, again, just enough weight and, and so balanced, my goodness, super balanced. Just exactly like a little bit of, little bit of um, bite here, a little bit of heaviness on the palate, a nice creamy texture, this lovely hazelnut kick, a bit of grapefruit skins, maybe just a nice caramelized pear. I used to cook this salad with arugula leaves, walnuts, and caramelized pear, where you put it in sugar and on a frying pan, and then it, the sugar melts and then it kind of sticks to the pear, when you put the pear, when the sugar melts, and then you put the pear, and then the sugar kind of sticks to the pear, and then it gives, it gives this, almost this crust, this crunchy crust on the top, if you do it right. All right, if you see, next time you see a shelf, uh, next time you see, Next time you see a Rudy wine on your shelf, go for it, grab it, especially if it's from Félix de Bavler or the Roi Mage, you know, the magical three kings. They are going to bear you beautiful wine gifts. I can promise you that. This is this is a solid name to, to try to go for. They're quite a small um, estate, so you won't find it 
in many places. Let's give it another try, maybe we'll find something else. Beautiful. Tension is there. Everything a wine needs. And again, fantastically affordable. They also have Premier Cru's. Again, there are no Grand Cru's in um, Rouilly. So if you're looking for a Premier Cru, and if you manage to find a Premier Cru from Félix de Bavler or his domain of Rouamage, look for Premier Cru Rouilly Les Cailloux. It's, it's one of the most amazing whites I've tasted from Burgundy. It's just fantastic. Mm. I choose the best for you here, <laughs> believe it or not. Let me know if you're familiar with this estate and I hope to see you very soon. We're done with Cochelonaise actually. Well, what else do we have to... I think I'm gonna move on a bit to Côte d'Or and there are a couple of places, although the Côte d'Or is this, you know, heavy waiter in Burgundy in terms of um, subregions, but there are some, some appellations that are not that well known. So I'll try to hunt for those and introduce them to you in the next episode of Untold Burgundy season. Shh. <sighs>